Hi, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. In the comments on one of my earlier videos about sharpening in Lightroom 4, somebody asked me how to simulate shallow depth of field in Lightroom, and I responded that Lightroom isn't very well suited to the job, it's better left to Photoshop. The commenter was a little skeptical, and understandably so. Lightroom is such a powerful program, it seems like it should be possible. And it is to some extent. So I'm making this quick video to show what you can achieve in Lightroom 4, and also what doesn't work very well. To begin with, it's worth mentioning that while Photoshop CS6 has several different types of blurs that can be applied to images, including those in the new Blur Filter Gallery, Gaussian Blur, and Lens Blur. Lightroom's choices are a little more spartan. You have the Sharpness slider, pretty much. If you set it to minus 100, it applies a light Gaussian blur. You can also back off the Clarity slider, which reduces local contrast and creates a different, kind of softer look. But for the moment, let's just stick with the Sharpness slider. On a photo like this one that I shot in Rocky Mountain National Park, where you can get away with just adding a blur to a large area evenly, if you wanted to blur this nearest mountainside, for example, you can just use the gradient tool and slide the sharpness down to minus 100, and then add in the gradient, and as you can see, this area is pretty blurry. I'll actually move this out a little bit, maybe move the whole thing out a little bit. And if that's not enough blur, you can add another one and blur that blur. And of course you can keep doing that until it's blurry enough for you. This isn't too bad. I, I wouldn't say that it's really convincing, but it serves its purpose. But what about a shot like this one? This is the type of situation where I'd typically want to have a shallow depth of field. My niece here was in the midst of an Easter egg hunt when I took the shot, and the background is still too busy and distracting. The photo would be a lot better if it were a nice smooth blur. A gradient won't work here, obviously, so the next option is to use the adjustment brush. Again, we move the sharpness slider as far to the left as it'll go. Now I'll check this option to show the mask as I paint it in, and then I'll use a big brush to just sort of block in the large um, empty areas away from the subject, like so. Now all of this area that's red is going to be blurred, but obviously I want the background blurred but not the subject, so what I need to do is turn on auto masking, and I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. I think you probably can't see my true brush size in the video, but anyway, now with auto masking on, what'll happen is when I get close to the subject, it will auto detect that line between the background and the subject if it's a good contrasty line. And it'll turn the background, this nice red mask, and the subject herself will remain unselected. Uh, and of course it doesn't work perfectly, but it works all right. For some of these areas, like down here along the grass where the auto mask selected a line that I didn't want selected, you can just turn off auto mask and then go in there and of course paint right over that. Or even with auto mask on, you can um, mix, use a smaller brush here, you can just sort of keep painting over it and eventually the auto mask will uh, select those other things as well. Now as you can see there are already some problems with my mask, especially in here and uh, up here in the hair. Uh, down here, and part of that's just because I was being sloppy here, but part of it is also because of the tool that I was using, that auto mask tool, you just sort of have to rely on it to do the job of selecting the right areas, and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, then you don't have a whole lot of recourse to better tools to correct things. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that you can see the bad spot here a little bit better, and um, if you hold down the Alt key, you can paint away, subtract this mask um, in areas that you don't want it, and that's 
easy enough to do. In fact, I'll just spend a minute here uh, cleaning up this mask a little bit. I won't make you watch me. So I've spent a few minutes cleaning up the mask, and now if you take a look at the mask, uh, it looks like it's doing pretty well, especially along hard edges like this. But even up in the hair, it looks like most of the hair is not selected, but the background is, which is pretty good for an automatic tool. But if you unselect this um, mask overlay, you can see what's really going on. Even along a hard edge like this, there's kind of an ugly halo effect where just the edge has been captured and is being blurred, and especially up in the hair, um, it gives it kind of a weird fantasy look, which just is not what we're going for. So to correct these problematic areas, you have to go in there with the subtract brush and just paint out these things. And you've got to go around and do that throughout the image on the edges. And of course, that leaves areas of the background that also um, end up not being blurred where they should be. So tricky areas like hair, you just don't have a lot of good options. Um, and that's one of the great things about Photoshop is that it's it has um, such powerful masking tools, whereas Lightroom just isn't made for that sort of thing. With this image, it ends up working okay. There are some problems, but after spending some time touching up the mask a bit, when I zoom out, they're not that big a deal. So here's the before, and here is the after. And as you can see, the effect is visible, but it's pretty subtle, because the only blur we can add is that negative sharpness. So again, if we want to add more background blur, the only option is to get in there and repeat the entire process again. And depending on how much blur you're expecting in the background, that can be a pretty tedious process. You might have to do it two or three more times. So that's the gist of it. In some cases it works well, in other cases not so well, but maybe still enough to be worth doing. But it simply doesn't have the ability to produce believable lens blur like Photoshop can. Anyway, I hope that this was at least a little bit helpful. If it was, I hope you'll like the video on YouTube. And as always, you can subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss other videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.